because I'm going to be triggered. I'm going to find conflict when I don't need to find conflict. So the, that's the whole aspect is, is realizing that it's not about being big and strong and being outward. That's the false masculine. And this is the patriarchal society that we're moving out of, is that perception that men think that I've got to be strong and to be manly means that I take no shit. No, a true masculine is there to support the feminine. You are the protector. But it's like, it's like, and that's why I like just jumping around loosely, but to go into symbolism, why the lion is the most ancient and archaic symbol for the masculine is because the lion is known as the king of the jungle. The lion doesn't go around starting shit. The lion roars just to let you know I'm not to be fucked with. Mm. Not because I want to go around and start starting on everybody to show who I am. I just, if you get too close, I'll let you know who I am, but I won't engage. That's the balanced masculine is I can turn it on if I need to, but I choose not to because nobody wants to have war. We, we all want peace. And that's the balanced masculine. But coming out of this patriarchal society, that is the big, I mean, it's, it's backwards. You know, it really is. And I mean, that's also where you have just so many women in their, in, in, in their masculine is because, you know, if you go back in time, the men were demasculated, basically. You know, people think a patriarchal society means it's all been rosy for the men, but it hasn't. Good men were, were, were ostracized in the same way as what women were. But what happened is when the men were demasculated, it meant that the women had to stand into the masculine because they had to get stronger in themselves. And now we're in this shift where we're trying to get the women out of their masculine side. You're trying to get the men out of the opposite side of, of, of the masculine side to get, get, to get balance again. So there's space for us all together to create that support and that union and move forward. Exactly. And uh, as you were uh, as you were speaking there, um, I was thinking as well about okay. So what is the way? What are the aspects of excuse me of balancing of balancing the male and female energy? Yes. And you mentioned about not looking outside, but if you uh, it is probably difficult to realize to realize that you traumatize when you are like sixteen or seventeen. Yes. So you're going to make your mistakes. But even at that age, at some point, you, you realize that it's getting too dark. Yes. Um, so your your system will tell you it will not be happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, first thing that you mentioned is to mm -hmm. realize what is manifested in your life, what is going on to the level that you can at this layer of healing mm -hmm. and then to go within and try to explore what is that center within you. And um, the way I do this, I usually do this through the meditation and stillness. So I get people uh, to that place when they can breathe in and out so gently that it's not, that is almost not there. And they get comfortable in that stillness and the mind is calming and they can realize, okay, so now I go like, check when your breath in is anchoring find your center beneath everything that you learned about yourself, beneath all of the ideas, everything that you have to do, just see from where you are moving when you are breathing, where is your center? Because in that center, there is no strong emotions. There is that stillness. Yes. And only if you can experience that, then you have, then you can kind of see where to come back to. Yeah. So that's, that's my take on it. And then, the next level was uh, bringing those energy to those energies together. So all you have like male and female outside or within, what has to happen? Like men has to realize, okay, this is the journey of growing up, realizing when it's the false masculine, why this is praised, uh, and realize what qualities actually you want to carry in your life. And then for women, I think because of uh, for us is the trust yes to learn so that because we are guilty of controlling men of manipulating men yes like when you look at the feminine out of balance she doesn't feel safe she doesn't trust so she's gonna control and manipulate to get this what she wants and she doesn't even understand what she wants you know these are not true desires and not inspired desires for life it's going out of imbalance yes so the feminine then has to learn to trust herself, to trust her own male aspect, and then she can bring that forward to trust men to support her and to create together, yes? Mm. Because otherwise there cannot be an authentic connection, yes? 
And in today's modern society, we see, um, you know, single mothers, hardworking, uh, you know, trying to prove that we are as, as successful and as good as certain works as men. And I hope that this is slowly moving away, but this is only happening because the unit of male and female together stopped working. We stopped trust each other so that everybody is hungry for that success on the outside and to get a bit for themselves. And we forgot how it is to be in union. So maybe let's talk a bit about this union and the offspring, which I have to, I have to, like, I think I follow you. Okay. On the philosophical level, on the soul level, I get the offspring, yes. But when I look at my personality self, I can follow you without any trigger to the point when you talk about the union and when the offspring comes in, I go like, oh, you lost me. So please explain what does it mean? Um, what does it mean uh, regarding what, what the union means and what the offspring means? Yeah. Right, I'm going, to, I'm going to do this from micro and macro. Sure, yeah. Just to, because it's easier to way. So let's just say, for example, at, at, at a micro level, right? So micro level within me as one person. Masculine, I have a masculine and I have a feminine side, just like everybody. And it needs to be balanced in everything that we do. And obviously we find then in this week, we find where it's out of balance, et cetera, and where we need to bring the work and what have you. But let's just say at a micro level, I want, I'm, I'm working on a creative project. I want to, maybe I'm putting together a course or something, right? Whatever it might be. It doesn't matter what it is. So that course starts with an idea. It starts in the feminine. Again, we're talking about the, the waters of, of, of chaos, the ether. So this waters of this potentiality. So I have this idea for a course. And I think about the course. I think how I could bring it. And I mean, this is particular for me. I, I, I work, I create 90% of what I do in my mind always. You know, like I, I, I'm not great with structure. I'm more my feminine most of the time. And, you know, but... I create this idea, I have this great idea, it's all in the feminine. And, and this happens a lot, right? If, if I don't move out of my feminine and invoke the masculine in a centered way to engage that feminine, what will happen is I will have so many ideas, I'll be in a spin in my own mind because I'm just in feminine, 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 feminine. And I will go around in circles and circles. And this has happened to me, I can tell you, days, weeks and end sometimes right, with ideas. Because what happens is, is the idea comes up in the feminine. It needs then the masculine to come in, like what we already said. And then I need to get that idea out of my head and, and in, in before it's actually created, but it needs to, it needs masculine energy to formulate it, to define it, to create structure for it, to bring that feminine into something, into structure. And then when I create that course at a finished thing and I put it together and it's now ready to go, that creation is the divine offspring. And the creation is what happens when both merge. So the feminine on its own is just the feminine. The masculine on its own is just the masculine. But when they merge, that's the divine offspring. So their creation. So again, if you think about this as like um, a couple, right? The woman on her own has the potentiality to, to bring forth life, but she can't do it on her own. So the masculine needs to come forth and, 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 and define this new creation in within the feminine where they union you know, and they, they create, you know, the sacred energy they create. And so we're still talking about the one person, but then they give birth to something, which is the divine child, which is the project, whatever it is that I'm working to create. So that's kind of why, why we need it. Because if, if I just stay in the feminine, it's just an idea. It'll just be an idea forever that would possibly drive me insane. If I'm just in the masculine, it means that I'm possibly trying to do everything without planning it, which means that everything I do is going to fail. Oh, no, that's not working together. That's not doing what I'm supposed to do because I'm just in my masculine. I'm not bringing in the feminine, which means that I'm not taking the time to, to, to think what I need to do to actually create it in my mind. I'm actually just trying to create it straight, straight in front of me. That's what happens if I'm just in the masculine. So we need both to create the perfect offspring, we'll say. So that's kind of at, at a micro level, you could say. Then like at, at a macro level, let's just say me in, in the entirety of my system. You know, that's... Again, let's say, for example, I, I, you know, I keep getting triggered by whatever. People just keep trying to take too much from me, right? So people are trying to take too much from me. So for the first thing I look into for me at, at, as a hermetic practitioner is I'd say, okay, so what's happening here? Okay, I, I'm getting triggered. I'm getting triggered because people are taking too much off me. So that means that I'm open and they're able to get in. That means I'm, I'm, 
I'm I'm um, I'm too much of my feminine. I'm not in my masculine enough, which means I don't have solid boundaries. Masculine energy is all boundaries as well because it's definition. So what happens is, so me, then I'm getting triggered by something big in my life, we'd say, right? So I realize then, okay, I'm getting triggered by this. So what's going on? Okay, I need a stronger boundary because these people are coming in way in too much and they're taking too much from me. So then I realize that, okay, I, I need more masculine energy. Mm -hmm. I need to bring it forward. And then if I invoke that masculine energy through different ways that can be done, one aspect is rage, connecting with your rage. Um, and then what happens is, is now I enforce a boundary and I say no, and a very firm no because I'm protecting my space. But for me to do that, I had to invoke more masculine energy to create that balance. Because it just, again, I obviously didn't have enough masculine energy, which means I have more feminine energy. I have more receptive energy, receiving, allowing people to come in. Oh, I'll just do that for you. I'll, I, you know, I'll do that. But it's too much. It's taking too much from me. So I need to reduce my feminine energy and increase my masculine. So I need to invoke masculine energy. And again, that's like putting boundaries in place, whatever. Obviously, at the deep inner work, you're talking about ways to activate the energy, which for me would be through rage. Rage is a masculine energy. Um, but that's what that would look like in, in the outer world. And then what happens is, so that's me is I'm creating balance in my masculine and my feminine to put in boundaries in place to make sure my field is okay. And the divine offspring is now my overall end condition. I'm now not being drained by people taking too much from me. I now have the perfect balance. I engage people exactly by what I need and what I've decided. And I have the structure in place. So that's like the, the divine offspring in that case at, at, at a more macro level. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I can definitely relate to this, that um, this process when, uh, you know, uh, maybe, I have ideas circulating and circulating and circulating and they drive me mad till I just start to write, bring into the action. Yeah. And, um, but I have to bring myself into this action. There is a certain blockage of, I don't know what I am afraid of, or will it fail? Will it not work? Or, um, will I not have enough energy? But the moment I start to write, down the ideas may be coming to the page in chaos firstly but then they start to clarify more and more and then an enjoy i really enjoyed the process of what is coming out on that page as an offspring as yes? i really enjoyed that so i can see that there is the, i also do this balancing when it comes to the creation process and it looks like the male and female energy are always has to do something so, something with a, creating the physical world or creation within the physical world, yes? No matter if it's family or projects, yes? And um, and I noticed as you were talking uh, about your journey, because uh, I noticed that I had the resistance to the word offspring and I realized that similar issues with boundaries that were my own issues that I had to work on or whatever happened in my life, that uh, left me disencouraged to believe that I can create with others in harmony. And of course I do, I cooperate with you in here. I, co I cooperate with, my, uh, with other people as well, but it's still, um, I could still feel the resistance to that word. And I realized, okay, when, for example, you grow as a practitioner now, I'm, sole trader company, I do everything by myself, but what, what when it comes to work in in a bigger team? Because what if I will work and I realize, oh, I'm actually, if I grow and I realize all came from the world offspring, I'm afraid to grow to the level where I will have to work in a team because it makes me feel unsafe, yes? Because what if all these boundaries is just too much drama? It's not that I can't control. It's not about control. It's more about this, that... It's too much, yeah? So then mm. I have to bring in the work on balancing male and female energy and include it with my personal development, with my growth. It's because I do want to grow, yes? I don't want to be stagnant. And maybe I will find a way which will not be creating like a corporation that, <laughs> you know, that... But the teamwork is along the way over there, yes? Like in the end, um, the whole fun is to create together bigger and bigger waves of changes yes so uh, thank you because that really helped me realize why i would be sabotaging my personal growth regarding business for example yeah so yeah and I mean, like it, it, and like this this is vast like you know because i mean like there's there's so many like there's 
Jesus, there's yeah. infinite amounts of parts of us that are out of balance. E- there's infinite amounts of parts of us within us that are masculine and feminine that are out of balance. So like it's, you know, so like it's it's not to say like, you know, I say like I'm in my feminine or I'm in my masculine. Like it doesn't mean like it, that could be the particular area that's showing up for me in my field right now, you know? So like it doesn't mean like we're not saying that your whole system but you will often get people who are much more in one side or the other because again, it's going to be it's going to be from childhood, like you know, um, and I mean exactly. I mean, if you think about it, like if you grew up in an environment like like what we said as the example before, um, and you've had to step into a masculine role, like if a father wasn't present, you know, and that doesn't matter again if if you're if you're male or female, it doesn't matter. But you're going to find that that you grow up and you're somebody who almost has to take control of things because you have to take control is for you to feel safe is because nobody else was, was taking control when you were younger or, or however the conditioning or the program came in first. So what happens is, is for you to feel safe, you have to be in control because nobody else was in control. Nobody else was looking after you in that degree, we'll say, of masculine or feminine. So now you end up with this conditioning, this program where you got to be, because if you do it your way, you know how it's done and you know exactly the parameters and everything is okay. If I have to offload that to somebody else, it's like... Oh, it's like you're opening up a whole part of yourself to be that that's wide open, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, it's, it, that's what I'm saying. It goes deep, but that doesn't mean that you're that imbalance is going to be in everything in your system. You could be on the other side. You could be more in your feminine on, on something else or, you know, so it's just to be, be to clarify that, that we're talking about, like when you go into this inner work, you're talking about, you're talking about fine strands of energy that are massive. Yeah. Golden, <laughs> golden threads, yes. Yeah. And there's so many of them, you know. Yeah, and so many of them, yes, 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 yes. And it's uh, and um, coming, yeah, coming back to the offspring, I can recognize that. I would always come across as a tomboy, yes, but it looks like now I was too much in my female energy because I didn't have boundaries, and I recently, in last years of my life did that work on healthy boundaries and understanding and build that up. And I'm still afraid to grow further. Mm-hmm. And the fear is around what if these boundaries will disappear and all this stress will come in. Yes. So, but so the medicine is to build up trust and rely more on my male energy and then the male energy outside as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. So interesting. And we are at the mark of uh, four past 10. So we are in here a little bit over an hour. Um, how about, let's let's dive into, uh, uh, and you mentioned a little bit about receiving and giving, yes? That you mentioned that, for example, overgiving was something that you dealt with. So mm-hmm. female energy would be, the nurturing energy would be seen as this one that can overgive and deplete herself and then get frustrated and all that. And then the male energy would be seen as the one um, that is giving, yes? Yeah. And in the the twisted mirror, then it it would be taking, yes? But even when you look at the sexual act, it's giving and the receiving, yes? Uh, But then the nurturing is the support that the man is receiving and they kind of have to receive one another, yes? The energies. So... Maybe let's talk a little bit about the blockages in receiving because many of my clients are strong females that find it very difficult to receive appreciation, help. Okay. And even, a, you know, even a, a day which is blissful but lazy, you know. Yeah, well, the, the first thing for me with this is, I mean, this I see this so much like with clients. Like for me, like, you know, it's, I, I can see this in people's photographs. If, I, if I'm scrolling through Facebook, I can see by people's photographs, masculine or, or you know, you can pick up so much like, you know, like in a way. And it is, as I said, that there, there's a conditioning in, in, in like, okay, I'm going to give you a snapshot here, which is something very simple logic, right? But okay, we, we're, Ireland have been colonized going back, you know, for, for quite a while. We, 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 we've, we've been colonized many times in this country. So have most countries in the world. And, you know, we've had, you know, if, especially if you go back into recent times where you talk about even, you know, only like we say 150 years ago or more, you know, um, it's very fresh in our system. And what happens in, when, when, when something, was, uh, a nation becomes colonized is the, um, the colonizing country that comes in that takes over, we'll say whatever, they obliterate your culture. 
it's, it's, it's a means of control. It's a means of that. That's what they do. One thing they do is they get rid of your language. They take away, you know, so many different things. Right. But in that process, what happened or what happens is men become demasculated because their power has been taken away. You now have a rulership that's over you that will most likely is threaten you with violence and death and what have you if you step into your, your masculine. So what happens is, is, is at a collective level in a particular nation, or if you could say, you know, you can do this in snapshots or micro to macro, but because the men get demasculated, which means that now there's, there's an opening. So what happens is then the women have to fill that gap. Someone has to be strong for survival to carry through. The men have been demasculated. Their power has been taken from them. And then when that happens to a man as well, a man is going to go into themselves even more so because they feel inadequate. This is just psychology, you know. And the more you feel inadequate, they're then going to put themselves deeper into that hole, which means take themselves out of the masculine even more than what's been taken from them, which means that just naturally the women are going to fill that gap. And then what you have is, and this is the time that we're in, that we're, we're, we're facing this. We have challenges from all over, but it's the one challenge, is women become over-emasculated. And then that can happen through generations. But what happens is then say that woman... Our man, it doesn't matter which, you know, if, if you want to come to, say, like an intimate relationship then, right? And again, a relationship is about balance. It'll swing at times. Sometimes you need to be give a little bit more because, you know, maybe they'll go through something and vice versa. But you needs to be a reciprocal balanced energy. Otherwise, somebody's going to be eaten. That, 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 that's just someone's going to be devoured. But what happens is, is we have this time where a lot of women are very much in their masculine because they had to be for survival. Right. But what happens is, is you have women then who want men to show up a certain way, but they haven't given them the space. Or you have men who want women to show up a certain way, but you, you don't have the space. Because if, if a woman is too much in the masculine, oh, he's not man enough, he hasn't. Well, like you need to peel back your, your masculine energy so that he can fill that and show up in that way and vice versa. You know, the, 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 in this case, the men need, needs to give more of the feminine. So like there needs to be space because it's the one energy. So, and again, when you talk about two people, if a woman is all in a masculine, then there's no room for the man to, to be in his masculine. Or if the man is all in his feminine, there's no room for the woman to be in the feminine. So like it's, it, it takes that balance, we say, from either side. Um, and you see, you see it everywhere, you know, because again, that's why, especially, especially Ireland is the perfect example. I mean, we're men in Ireland are, 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 are mammy's boys. You know, that, that, this is the culture, but you can see why. It's because you've had the demasculation of the men, which is why another reason you could look into alcoholism and, and addiction is because yeah, yeah. if you can't step into your power, you have to numb that feeling of inadequacy. So they all, it, it's all intertwined, you know, the, the whole thing. But yeah, I don't know if that covered what, what, what you're asking, but that's... I don't even, I don't think that I was asking about anything, but right. uh, yeah, I really like the way uh, I was asking about, oh yeah, I was asking about receiving and giving. Okay. Um, and to maybe talk in those terms uh, about the male energy and you went uh, to describe what is uh, how the energies full kind of fill the gaps when one is one uh, out of balance uh, in the framework of the society or a family mm -hmm. so and the collective consciousness yes so we mm -hmm. have the masculine man that to survive has to act like a coward mm. so one generation suffers about that another generation believes that but then and then you have uh you have also female energy coming in and taking that space and then i can see the strong irish woman that you will not mess with yes mm. uh, and um very straightforward uh, and and then they would really love their sons yes and their their guys, their husbands are the masculine, so they don't have that male energy enough, so they will look for the support. And then we have smothering mothers and this very deep connection that actually blocks the development of men, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and, it, and I mean, it works both sides. Like, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm probably speaking more on the men's side because obviously I am I am yeah. a man. But, but I mean, this this works on both sides. You know, this, this, is, this, this, is, this is crippling for the women as well. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, it works of and, course. It... and then when you mentioned the alcoholism all this like we can see how that comes from the imba imbalanced male and female energy and that that alcoholism doesn't touch men only mm. you know that so 
understanding uh, understanding of all that is the entry point to actually be able to go through that process yes so <clears throat> And there's a knockdown effect, like for me, like this, you can see this like at a conscious level. This is how, how, I, how I see everything through my mind. Like, but you look at this, like it's like a pyramid. So, like the second the wound, the second something gets knocked out of balance, is like the apex of the pyramid. But unless it's brought back into center within, that just morphs into generation after generation after generation. You know, and, and it goes on and it takes, and this is why we call in this work, like we, 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 it's like the circuit breaker we, we, is the term that we, that we use in this work is the person, the family who's guided to step forward and, and to, to break that circuit of energy, of imbalance. So that yeah. person will then come to the inner work to create the balance because somebody has to put a stop to this because it's, 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 this is where the wound happened, the split, whereas the, the out of balance masculine and feminine went, but it goes into the next generation and it gets wider. That, and then that split starts to show up in different ways. So then it starts to show up in addiction. It starts to show up, we will say, in, in physical violence. It starts to show up, you know, you know, in all sorts of things. It manifests in so many different ways, depending on the coloring that, that, that's in that particular clan. But that is getting wider and it's impacting more and more people as, as it comes down because, you know, that's where it happens. So the circuit breaker is someone who's going to bring this back into balance so that it doesn't go into the next generation. Exactly. And bringing it back to balance starts from understanding that there are energies like that. And maybe first we can look at what we are creating. If the creation is distorted, we'll be complaining about that all the time. So mm. then we look within. And you see, I asked about giving and receiving, and I have to pick on that, Peter. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So uh, it was giving and receiving, the male and female energy. And... Um, and I think it moved a little bit more to the outside, to the dynamic in family and society and relationship. And you were talking about the relationship and about this, that if if there is no balance, no place for one another, one will be devoured, eaten. Yeah. And that's that's a very, very strong word. Yeah. So I, yes. it's, it's like, but what do we experience in toxic relationships? Yeah. I uh, just yesterday I had, uh, no, that was today. I had a session before our meeting and the person on the session mentioned, I completely lost myself in that relationship. I lost my identity. She, she was eaten yeah. and now she's recovering from it. So there is a lot of trauma that we have to heal from on a lot of levels, but also the benefit of that, looking forward to this, how we can create reality to bring this offspring, it's very promising. And uh, I think there are different levels, like when you work with your own male and female energy, it seems safer, yes? And then you can work with male and female energy outside and projects, interactions, friendships, but then when it comes to the intimate relationships, God save me, yeah? That is the that is the most tangible and vulnerable level when we can actually face this. Am I really in balance? And how it will manifest in that relationship when all these energies are mixing in such a close relationship, yes? Mm. Scares the hell out of me. Yeah, and I mean like like relationships, I mean, especially intimate relationships are where you're going to see that wound bigger than ever. Like that's the that's the one place that's what they're for is because that well not that's what they're for but that's that's where the these particular wounds especially of mother and father in particular and that mother and father is also going back in the clan like it's where they're going to show up most is because you are going to attract in the equal but opposite of what needs to be brought back into balance of, uh, in your own system um you know and it's it's you know it's it's that thing as well I mean it's it, People see as humans. I mean, I've talked about this a bit lately, is because trying, I've trying to been talking a lot about consciousness and trying to explain things with it. But like you have to understand, like humans, we all, we all like to think that we're there. That's just part of the shadow of humanity. That's part of our shadow. But it's also part of our work to sit back and take responsibility, which means that we have to be brutally honest with ourselves. And just we'll say an example is like that giving and receiving. We say in a relationship. Like there's there's many reasons as to why, but like so it's all well and good for me to say, well, you know, if the feminine is too much in her in her masculine, she needs to step back a bit to leave space for the masculine. But that means that the masculine also needs to cut back on his feminine to meet that middle. But 
that takes responsibility on each of those people to admit to themselves, hang on a second, I have some work I need to do. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're just going along on the surface. And again, I talk about the material level and you're working from the material level. Oh, you're not showing up the way you want it. I don't like when you do that. You know, whatever. So basically, you're taking no ownership for your side. You're blaming, every, you're projecting everything onto the other side. So a healthy relationship is where both people can meet in the middle and none of us are perfect and say, oh, okay, I didn't realize that part to me. Because again, you're not going to realize some parts unless you bring somebody else into the mix. Because maybe you, you, you like your own company. I like that trait I have. I didn't realize it bugs the life out of somebody else. But this is part of the journey. So now that they've highlighted this, would you have to do that work? So that give and receive requires two people to do that work. And that's why in the current times that we're in, how much codependency exists out there? It's rampant. People don't want to be on their own. People don't want this or that because they don't want to sit with their own shadow. If I just fill that gap there, and that is how one side gets devoured, is because I'll just sit here because it's easier than having to face the darkness of my own shadow, which don't get me wrong, facing your shadow is not easy. It's difficult, but that's what the true work is. And as long as people butt heads on the surface and the material level, this is what the idea that we're moving out of, by the way, this is what's required to move into the end of ours is responsibility. Is it no longer, am I going to sit here and just blame everything on you? If there's if there's a, a frictional counterpart or interaction that's happening, both of us have parts that are in the wrong. You know, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're more on the extremity side and I'm more on the, or in, 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 in the passive side, but that's on both of us to meet the middle. You have to come lesser in yours and I have to come more in mine or vice versa. But it's not up to one side to do that work. It's both sides. And if both sides aren't open to that work, personally, I don't think that's compatible. It's not because, work. Yeah. And, and the other aspect, yeah. just to throw in at the end of that as well, is just remember that we view people where we see that they can be. And that's not reality. Like we always see the best in somebody. Just remember, that's your program wanting you to stay there as well. So like if that person is not there now, maybe they might, might take them 10 years to get there. Maybe they won't ever get there in this lifetime. But are you going to hold yourself back waiting for what you expect of someone else? You know, like it's, it's, you have to take things exactly as they are. And it's, it's work required for all of us. You know, that's the other side of that give and take. It's, yes. Uh, I would like to add something into that. So I only take a few minutes if that's okay with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, not, we are in here almost an hour and a half, so I'm just checking. If... Oh, good. Okay, so the way I look at the relationships um, with all of the experiences that I gathered, and some of them were not pleasant at all. Uh, I, you know how in 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 psychotherapy in psychology there is that saying that you're gonna marry your father you go or your mother that you're gonna marry the wounds that you're gonna find someone that will be and you will also be very very much attracted to that person that will saturate your wounds yes the awareness that you mentioned the uh, the ability to look within and realize okay there is a trigger we just move some skeletons in the wall in the wardrobe so let's do the healing in whatever form is needed, is the distance needed, is there closeness needed, whatever is needed to actually grow in this opportunity instead of creating more of a drama. And, but I learned that, and I found it interesting. And to a certain point in my life, when I was still a prisoner of the desire, it was difficult to accept, but then I let go of it. I go, yeah, that works. The stronger the magnetism is, the stronger the pull is, and the stronger, uh, the faster and deeper you jump in into that relationship, the more you can be sure that you are already moving from your wounded part, mm-hmm. that you are already moving out of balance. And uh, and then very quickly you realize that your pain is replaying, the issues with your father, the issues with your mother. And it takes a lot of awareness to be able to, many people go to couples therapy, yes? Because it takes a lot of awareness to give yourself space to work through these aspects. And now, when I'm at the age of 42, and I would even, for entertainment, consider the idea of relationship, that is the main point. Yeah, What is the capacity to understand ourselves and one another so that we won't forget who we truly are, yeah? so that we won't be seeing our demons mm-hmm instead of the essence and instead of simply enjoying the co-creation 
we fall into the nightmares, yes? Yeah. And with full respect and acceptance of that, that you cannot keep the skeletons in the wardrobe. They will go out, yes? Mm -hmm. They will. So, they get yeah. No, That's, yeah. They will. So, but still, the the intimate relationship is something that uh, uh, I would see as a challenge. Yeah, that would be something that I'm not sure if I would be able to build. Yeah, if mm. is is it if especially if you're coming back from yes, there was a lot of healing, a lot of understanding, and a lot of integration work that happened. But imagine that the memory that you have about the relationships are the ones that were repeating the trauma and stuff went sideways. But then on the other hand, where else you can where else you can check if you matured, that you only need the conditions which actually can check that. Otherwise, you will never know. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a, that. that it's, I mean, this is the it's it's the what's the word is this is the the, the catch twenty two of it, like isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I, I used to always, I remember I used to say this to a couple of friends years ago. It was like, you know, it's, th th this this work can be a lot easier to just isolate yourself and be completely on your own because you don't have to deal with anything else. But then you need that other side to activate those parts that you're not going to see unless you are engaged with somebody else. Do you know that kind of way? So it's like, like you bring in exactly, like exactly what you said, like you bring in, you know, a, a partner. You know they're they're going to amplify things in your system that wouldn't be amplified without their interaction. So you need them to get that deeper lens into yourself to see what 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 what's required in balance. But I suppose for me, just just one totality on all that to to round it up is the fact of a true relationship in a balanced way requires maturity. Yeah, and that goes back to like what you said earlier on, which I hundred percent agree with. Is the fact of like this work for me in particular, just just to highlight is is. I'm only coming into my age, barely now. You know, even, even when I was doing this deep work for the last few years, I was still aware that I'm very much the mentality of, of, of a late teenager or, or in my early, I always think I'm still in my, my early 20s. Like, you know, and, and it's exactly because that initiation hadn't happened. You know, the maturity was, had, hadn't come in because well, I was just living out in programs. You know, I have a line in, in, in um, I think, Love and Grief, one of my poems, and I talk about like, you know, an adolescent, was it? I can't think what it was something about like uh, being stuck in adolescence because I was in such a rush to become grown because again, the programs that I actually just became a grown up adolescent. That's all. Cause you take that age with you as you go through, cause you haven't allowed yourself to be present in the time that needs to mature to create balance. You're running ahead because obviously you're taking on a program. You're, you're becoming a father in, in a role that, that that's not yours or a mother or whatever, whatever it is. Um, and so you, you mature, well, you falsely mature too young, which means that you miss the window of the time that you were supposed to be in where the matru real maturity happens. And so we grow up and we're all adolescents. We are all bloody grown, you know, adolescents. We, we haven't matured the majority of us. And that's what this work does. And so when you realize this and you can really see it clearly, you understand that, well, I don't want a relationship unless it's going to be mature, unless I can meet somebody at that level of awareness who can actually understand this. You know, that I got, I'm not going to ruin my peace and get into someone if I'm trying to explain that, listen, and have an argument after argument because you don't see that we both need to address something here. Like, that's just going to be like a dog chasing its tail. You know, so it, it does require maturity. And that's another reason why it can be so daunting. You know, you can do a lot of work on yourself and you can see all this stuff. And then you can see the state of the shadow of humanity. And you're like, ooh, and it's a dangerous minefield. So it is, it, it is, it's... It's unnerving as well to kind of put yourself out there and to see what, you know, what's yeah, the next. I just pray that the trauma will not replay. One yeah, like, what's 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 the next piece that's going to show up that needs to be brought back into balance in my system, like you know. But yeah, that's all. What we need is the maturity uh, and the capacity to realize what is going on, take space when it's needed, and mm. you know, be aware what is it that you are observing in your partner. I guess. I would like to add one more thing in here because uh, you mentioned about the initiations and I know that I think we understand them a little bit different. Um, but I'm fascinated about the rituals that would be used in, in, in Pogan Poland and all over the world way, way many years ago before the Catholic Church baptized most of the Europe. 
but uh, the coming of age rituals, you know, like cutting the hair, coming for her for first hunting, going somewhere into cave. I, I know this is my tomboy speaking now because I was always more excited about the coming of age rituals for men. It's like, <laughs> wow, that's the greatest adventure ever, yes. And it took me time to understand the rituals which are passed on in the female culture, uh, between females, yes? The knowing how to keep the fire, the knowing how to kill the chicken, the knowing how to feed the others, the knowing of herbs, um, the wisdom of how to deal with emotions, the wisdom of how to bring child to this world in the most healthy and way, like the whole knowledge about bringing child into this world, the midwives, the ancient midwives, uh, the witches really, all that uh, is the the realms that are so fascinating. And suddenly this male and female energy to my writer's mind becomes very attractive. It becomes like an adventure. But then you actually see uh, it's not so much, oh, modern society, every, like we just have to work on this aspect. It is actually connected with nature and you can really test yourself with this, how you can engage in life uh, from like, are you able to hunt? Are you able to survive in cave? Are you able to prepare the meal? Do you know all this wisdom, which probably I'm not able to acquire in my life, but I find it fascinating that this, this made you understand. I can imagine that that would make you understand the male and female energy on the very, like, on the level which is passing by the mind, yes? Mm. It's uh, it's becoming you and, and you're learning this when you are a child and you're moving more and more and getting more and more mature and it's simple life, but at the same time it's sacred. It's very important, yeah? So what is your take about uh, coming of age rituals? Like if you would have a son, would be like, yeah, that's the greatest idea. I will take you to the cave now. Yeah, well, well, I mean, for me, it's, it's. I mean, like, it's there's so, there's so many pieces that I, I play in this. You know what I mean? Like, that's one thing. And for me, like, in, what initiation is, is initiation, a true initiation. I mean, there's many, you can say micro initiations, but a major initiation is, is a major shift in consciousness. It's a major shift in your reality. And so, like, when we talk about this coming of age, that major shift is, I now know that I'm no longer a boy and something happens that means that there's a shift in consciousness that I'm now a man. Same with a woman. You know, I'm no longer a girl. I mean, women, obviously, still with, with, with a moon cycle, there's some form of initiation for, for, for women that does naturally still exist. I know it's still not the, the, a, a full a full rite, rite of passage. But for men, we, we, we've completely lost it. Um, we've completely lost it at all. I mean, it's, it's not so much what the activity itself is. It's what the activity moves in you. I'm put out on my own for the night. I'm no longer a boy. I'm out there in the wild. I'm also friendly. It's it's not so much what you're doing, but it's it's how it changes your mind. Because your mind, if you if you visualize what's really happening in, in in a situation like that, is your mind realizes, oh crap, I'm not at home in the safety and being nurtured here. I'm fecking out in it here. And just remember ancient times as well. You're talking about wild beasts and animals that are out there. I'm really out here. I could lose my life. So that's that forces you to switch your mind into this like playful child into this. Hang on a second. I got a clue in here. And so it really transforms your consciousness to realize that it breaks. It severs that childish because again, you're, you're thrown out into the wild. You have to switch out of that mentality, which is a massive shift in consciousness. And it, and it throws you into it because there is no safety ropes. Yeah. And that, that is why, how it happens. Um, and so like for me, that's, that's the shift that's needed. Something has to happen in life. Because again, talk about life, death, rebirth, the, 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 the beautiful symbolism that we happen the whole time. There has to be an experience of death to make way for the rebirth. So that death has to be something that shifts our mind and our, our consciousness drastically. And so the fear of, I'm thrown, the fear of death, physical death, and feeling that insecurity of just being thrown out and, and completely naked symbolically, like, you know, to the elements, we'll say, and to, and to the wild beasts, you know, that that is something drastic that that is a death impact that creates a rebirth. That the rebirth is your new shift in consciousness. So I'm no longer a boy. I'm now in, I have in, I'm engulfed in this. And obviously the, 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 the same for, for women as well. Something has to show, there has to be a break. There has to be something because otherwise we're just flowing through. We don't know when there's a change. 
We're just going through. So you need something that like, okay, this is an event. Something has changed. This is an event. Something has changed. You know, for me, that's the importance of initiation. And for me, that's what this healing work is, mm. is because we're so deeply out of balance. We were so deeply, so far misconstrued and, and taken off the, the, the divine path that this healing work is, again, the shifts in consciousness when you, when you move through something and you bring balance back into something. It's like, oh, my God, because we're seen through the wound. That's all we see. We don't see the peripheral. We, we have a limited viewpoint. Then you heal something. There's a, there's a major moment. And it's like, oh, my God, now I see the, all this and that was going on. I thought it was all just this. You know, but that that's the event that shifts consciousness. But that's what we're missing is because, you know, if because we, we're not, again, going back to the mothers and the fathers, like, you know, we're, you know, again, the Irish thing is like we're, we're boys in Ireland, like with, with the Irish mammy, we're, 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 we're smothered. And like, well, that's all great. And it's, and it comes from the right place. It's, it, it also means that we've lost our manliness, the strong, the solid, the balanced masculine, because we haven't stepped out into our own. We've been overly protected, you know, yeah. which then has detriment all the way down that pyramid, as, as, as we said earlier on, which will show up in different ways. Yes, yes, exactly. We were talking about that. And uh, I really liked uh, this what you said about the the rite of passage, this this ritual there that it is how your consciousness shifts, how your energy moves, that that's the internal change you becoming a new version of yourself. So that's beautiful. And I wonder if there's because I think we have to come to the close. It would be good even for two parts. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Um no, I think I think I'll leave it at that because I mean this is something again. Like I, I feel like I'm only getting warmed up in this again. You know what I mean? But like it's 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 something that look we, I'm sure we're going to be talking about again anyway. Like it, it it's vast. You know I don't want to old people with too much information either. Like exactly. All right, everybody. So again, uh, I'm here with Peter Kelly, and you can check his uh, work on subconsciously conscious uh, platform and path to gnosis, and you will find all the details in the description box. My name is Barbara, my platform is called Bridges to Gamma, and we connect in here on the Rose podcast to share all these ideas with you. So please let us know if you have any concepts that you would like to share, any feedback, we would love to hear from you, all right? And like and subscribe, that means a lot as well. So I'm going to stop the recording here.